I'm Nan Rothwell, and I'm going to show you how to make a wiggle wire mug. I've gotten in the habit of cutting the bottoms of my cylinders with wiggle wires. And when you're going to do that, you need to leave a little extra clay. So I'm drawing straight and flat across. Now, if you have, if your clay has any tendency at all to S-crack, you need to make sure that you really spend a little time compressing the bottom. I don't like it when um, there's the sound of a spoon clattering across ridges in the bottom of a mug when you stir in sugar. So I usually use a wooden tool to make get rid of those ridges. Then the next thing I do when I'm throwing a cylinder is I push up and in like this. This is a motion that um, when you're throwing a cylinder you want to make sure that initially it's sort of water tower shaped and then straighter and then straighter. If you start with it straight it's going to go out. And then my my way to pull up a cylinder is with my thumb and my knuckle and this thumb on the outside you grab a hold of it, give it a pull. Now one of the things about working with a wiggle wire is that you need to uh, remember what you're doing so you don't go too, too thin because you're going to be cutting some of this wire off, some of this wall off. At the point when I think I've gotten it pulled about the amount that I want it to be with the wall still thick, I then do, subdivide it so that about four-fifths of it stays on the bottom and one-fifth is on the top. And then I work on just that top fifth to get it as thin as I want it to be. Everything below that, I need to leave it thick enough that I can carve it. So I think this is, I think I'm there. Um, and there's my top fifth. I usually just make an imaginary line like that instead of a real one. And then I pull the clay up more above that line so that it gets to be the sort of standard thinness. Okay, now I really need to make my line not just imaginary, but actual because I need to cut below that line only. I'm using a wooden rib to clean the outside of this off. You don't want it to be um, wet because as you carve the clay off it's going to tend to stick if the wall is wet. You need to dry it off a bit. Okay, so I'm going to take a moment and show you what I mean by the, um, the options here. Here's one that I did a wiggle wire on where I didn't have the wheel turning. And um, that's the less exciting way to do it, but uh, you can all, you know, it, it, it can be quite nice. Here's one which I did with the wheel turning, but the wire not wiggling. Um, so you can see that the wheel was turning fairly slowly, or actually fairly quickly, and the wire was going fairly slowly. So you, I got quite a long track around. And here is one with the wheel churning and the wire wiggling. This is the kamikaze. And that's what I'm going to try and do here. But first I need to do an undercut. For just a regular mug that might be enough, but since I'm going to be carving down into it, I really need to take, make quite a deep undercut um, so that when the wire comes down, which you'll see in a moment, it doesn't hit the bat. So here is my baby wiggle wire. And I'm going to draw the line now of where I'm going to start my carving so that I have something to, to watch. And then I'm going to have the wheel go quite slowly. Brents are great for this because they have really good speed control. And I'm going to jiggle the wire back and forth as I move my hands down. Now this gives you a diagonal. I'm going straight down, but because the wheel's turning, it gives you a diagonal. Um, it's a little bit like watching grass grow in a way. Um, a little slow moving this because you have to wait for it to come back around. If you're, um, if you find that, that you take a, a fair amount of time to throw and your clay is fairly soft, you can put this aside for a while and then come back and do this. This is moving around a fair amount, but I think it's going to be okay. It's a pretty soft clay for this process. So again, I wait till it comes around and then I put my wire right there and just jiggle down. And you need to go the same speed every time in order to keep the same angle. So I'm almost at the point now where I'm going to have to make a choice about whether to do one or two cuts. But luckily for me, that ended up with a pretty clean, um, just one facet size left. Sometimes you end up having to do two very narrow ones so you don't cut right through. And here's the last one. Et voila. 
So <clears throat> this will need to sit for a while, but one thing I like to do before I take it off the wheel is I like to throw the top one more time and get that top edge. Um, if it's gotten thrown off round slightly, you can put it back on round at this point, and you can also use a chamois to just get it so it's nice against your mouth when you're drinking. And then if the clay looks like it will hold up to it, I also like to come in and give it a little bit of a belly from the inside. I think pots look best when they look as if you've blown into them and they're slightly inflated. And if you're going to undercut with a wiggle wire, you don't want to do it right away because it tends to restick. So I'm going to leave that alone. I will undercut it later. And meanwhile, I'm going to show you how I put a handle on. So in my home studio, I have a pug mill and I usually take a pug of clay and flatten it and then cut it on a diagonal. And what I'm aiming for is something like this, which is the, sort of the equivalent of a half of a pug of clay. And then I just beat it into shape. Depending on the size of the handle that I want to make, I would have a smaller or a larger, and also on how many handles I want to make, I would have a smaller or a larger piece. I always work in series, so I'm never making just one handle. Pulling handles is, I think, something that people have a hard time learning. It's not hard once you can do it, but it's, it's quite hard to learn. So I keep coming down all the way to the bottom, keep my hands wet, and just keep turning it 360 as I come. And what I'm aiming for here is a, is, is a blank that is um, thinner from top to bottom than from side to side, kind of a ribbon shape, and that's just a little bit larger than the handle I want to eventually put on my mug. I usually have this nice long, long piece going because I'm going to make several handles out of it. So when I get it to what looks like the right shape, I lie it down flat on a board, make sure it's perpendicular to the, to the edge of the board, and then lop it off like that. That looks a little small to me for this mug, so I'm going to make a slightly thicker one. So um, the, this is a, a mug I made earlier. This is one where the wheel was turning, but I did not wiggle the wire. So you can see that I just got the grooves from the wire. Before I put the, and it's been dried, it's been dried to just about the perfect consistency. I like them so that they still have a little flex in them. Before I put the handle on, I usually take a minute and clean all the little goobers off because um, it's easier to do it before the handle's on there. And I do that with a damp sponge and it's a fairly quick process. You can come back later, of course, and do some more cleaning up. So you choose the place that you like the least. You look, you find your way around the mug until you find a place that that you think, ugh, I don't want anyone to see that. And that's where you put your handle so that you can cover up your weakest spot. So I do my scoring and slipping with one of these little, uh, I think it's a Kemper tool, a little metal tool with teeth. And having decided that this is my ugly spot, I'm going to score it right here. Uh, when I work at home, I work onto a table and um, I also have a little uh, baby food jar of my clay slip with a little bit of paper clay and a little sodium silicate in it. So that it just, it, it acts as a slightly better glue. So I, I scored that and then I ran my wet finger across it. it. It also helps if you dip your little tool in the water as you go. And it's going to come down to here, but I'm not going to bother to get that wet yet. I'm going to set this here and pick up my handle. This is way more handle than I need, so I'm just going to lop the end off. Then you pick it up and you tap the end to thicken the end. So that, um, because where these handles tend to have problems is right at the attachments. So you want to get that a little thicker. And then I put it up against the pot. I put the pot on the table, put my hand on the inside so that as I push along the handle, I don't deform the shape of the pot. And I push along the handle like that. Then you can pick it up and get the bottom. This is pretty floppy. <laughs> get the bottom attached. The main thing as you, as you deal with these handles, what you want to do is you want to keep the handle at, at right angles to the pot. Don't let it flop around. The other thing I have besides my little uh, baby food container with the paper clay and sodium silicate, I also keep a soft throwing sponge around so I can do all the touching up. Now I'm keeping it at right angles and I'm going to put it so that the handle is perpendicular to the floor. I'm going to pull it again, but much, much more gently. This time the pulling is really just to get rid of my uh, attachment marks. It's not, it's the same motion as the initial pulling, but um, 
more gently. If this makes you nervous and you think you're going to pull your handle off, then you haven't got it well enough attached. If at this point you want a groove in it, this is the point when I would put a groove in it, like that. Then, again, keeping it at right angles to the pot, I'm going to get the place where it's going to attach damp by running my fingers across it with water. The last pull, you stand the pot up and then line it up to make sure it's um, straight up and down left to right. And then make sure that you're not using too much of the handle. One of the things that beginners' handles tend to do is they tend to use too much of the handle so they stick too far out from the pot. To me, this looks like I could use a little less of it. Can you see the difference? That looks a little better to me. Then when you're going to push the bottom in, you don't want to push up and you don't want to pull down. You want to push straight in. If your pot is fairly soft, you should put a hand on the inside. And ideally, your pot will be soft enough that without a hand on the inside, you might deform it. That's a good diagnostic. So I'm going to attach both sides of this. Take that off the bottom. If you feel like the handle has begun to sag a little, now is the time to turn the pot upside down. Take a damp finger and just give it a little lift, like that. See the difference? 